itself in terms of putting money into the system on M1 and then mopping it up as M2 in cash reserve ratio. Something has to happen about money supply in Nigeria and the management of all of that. You heard today that TSA account balances are 5.2 trillion. But that money finds its way back into the system through disbursements. We've got to come to terms with that as a reality. But the exchange rate impact is beginning to have an effect on prices in Nigeria. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rwani. Uh, we, can, we have just about 24 hours uh, to hear from your economic research team. I have them on the show tomorrow morning uh, to talk sure, more okay. to, today. So I'm going to crunch the numbers, as it were. Mr. Makrawani, Chief Executive Officer at Financial Derivatives Company. Let's cross over to Frankfurt Stock Exchange, where my colleague, Ulrich Bartz, who is there for Channel Television, uh, GWTV financial correspondent for Channel Television is standing by uh, to talk us through the European Trading Day. Overnight, we had the Federal Reserve Chief, Janet Yellen, talking about a possible rate hike in the month of March. Then we had the alliance, or likely uh, deal, between Pojo and Opol, which is the uh, General Motors uh, maker of Opol in uh, Germany. Uh, this is a business story that is all hanging around there. Let's get uh, uh, Ulrich to talk to us, uh, starting from this uh, car maker, Opol, continuing to be uh, in the headlines. What's the new developments you're hearing today? You guys are the ones on the ground. So what's driving uh, and who's driving what? Yeah, uh, Mary Berra is driving over to Rüsselsheim, if you will. Uh, she's <laughs> flying over to uh, meet with the uh, head honchos uh, in the headquarters of Opel. Um, no word on the agenda or who exactly she's meeting with, but uh, she's supposed to be meeting, we hear, uh, with the supervisory board head and, uh, of course, also with the CEO, uh, Neumann. And uh, an interesting tidbit of news I heard is that uh, Neumann, the CEO, didn't even know what was brewing uh, behind his back between Detroit and Paris, between GM, the Opel parent, and Peugeot, Citroën, PSA. Uh, that is, the CEO not in the know uh, that his company was maybe uh, being sold. And uh, workers' representatives, I heard one on, on the radio here in Germany today, uh, he saw Bochum close, the big factory, um, and uh, 3,000 jobs were lost there. And he says uh, the GM just has a very brutal, harsh, a uh, fast approach uh, to decisions like this. The Peugeot CEO is ready to meet with Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel. The government is very worried about the development. It was also uh, in the dark, and both the economics and the labor ministers uh, have both weighed in with comments and with appeals uh, to the negotiating parties saying, respect the workers' rights, keep the factories where they are in the towns, don't hurt uh, German interests. Uh uh, thank you. We'll keep an eye on that uh, important uh, car deal. But again, I'm not sure you spent the whole time listening to Janet Yellen's testimony on the Capitol yesterday. Started yesterday, she's going to conclude today. But of course, the takeaway from that, everyone listening in on dinner table around here, is about when is the Fed going to, uh, the FOMC is going to uh, hit the button and push a rate hike. Up. What's happening? I'm seeing the DAX behind you there in negative territory. Uh, is that a part of the uh, sentiments today? I think the sentiment is now that um, the next mate rate hike could be as early as in March. Up to the time she spoke yesterday in the Senate, uh, people were basically ruling that out. They assumed that she would want to watch uh, the effect of Donald Trump's new policies first before she moved. Will there be as big spending as people are perhaps expecting will that lead to inflation will that need to this necessity for the for the fed to react and maybe react sharply but she seemed to indicate yesterday that she's ready to move any time and that means including march and she, she said something very interesting she doesn't want to be late uh, with raising rates because once things get moving it could basically spiral out of control. Those were not her exact words, but that's how I understood her. If the Fed reacts too late, I think is her worry, then uh, the reaction could be too harsh and send with high, high interest rates uh, the economy into a recession, and she wants to avoid that. So we could be seeing... Uh, less less pronounced but more regular interest rates uh, hikes uh, in the next couple of months we have to wait for that to play out but that's how she sounded and uh, her upbeat remarks on the economy that was what drove wall street uh, to uh, the fourth day of record highs uh, but that sort of that 
effect has sort of petered out here in Europe. Uh, the DAX behind me, it's uh, hardly moving. Yeah, or it doesn't. Uh, my takeaway was that uh, uh, Yellen, Jenna Yellen, doesn't want to be the one to spoil the party as it were. She doesn't want to be the one that broke the economy. So she's <laughs> trying to tread very carefully, yeah. trying to let the administration of Trump be you know, on one side and say, look, everything is going strong. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm here, but I'm going to be around till 2018. Nobody's in a hurry. I'm going to keep that team. But very interesting. Let's go back to Europe and, and conclude this. Uh, it, it looks like the Italian banker, Monte De Pasche, is looking like too big to fail because the European uh, Commission has uh, given a preliminary um, go ahead for the non-performing loans of this bank to be uh, recast in, in some, with the in investors. What's the latest on that? Yeah, I think that's uh, an interesting uh, piece of news. That would be a major advance for Monte de Paschi uh, because it's, it's a huge mountain of uh, non-performing debt, and uh, uh, it, it, you know, it basically the throat is being uh, closed. And uh, if that is indeed true, if it is allowed to do that, if there are people out there uh, willing to accept that in some way, then it can be good news. But uh, you know, Monte de Paschi. It has to also perform on its own, and whether that can save the banks in the end and give shareholders some sort of compensation who are, who are really looking at a very, very low share price now, uh, I think that's uh, quite open at the present time. Okay, we'll take that in our stride. Thank you, Ulrich Bax. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll have the rest of the week together. Let's move on to Wall Street, where the stocks index futures are pointing to a mixed open today. As traders eyed further comments from the Federal Reserve Chief, uh, Janet Yellen, she's concluding her two-day uh, testimony on the Hill today, and a host of earnings and economic data. On the data front, today we'll see consumer price index and retail sales released at 8.30 Eastern. Industrial production and capacity utilization data that's scheduled for 9.15 Eastern. Business inventories, as well as National Association of Home Buyers survey released at to be 10 o'clock in the morning. The Fed Reserve will testify before the House Financial Services Committee for a second day today. You can see the early numbers there. East Coast, Wall Street, the futures for the Dow, S&P and the Nasdaq. We'll be back after the break. We've got a lot to talk about the Nigerian market as well and the troubled Malabo oil field transaction.